The Taoist goal is not to fulfill the human ego with insatiable desires. It is to quiet the ego and calm the mind so that the subtle energies in the body can be first observed and then cultivated to a high level of awareness. Then the mind can see its true role in the larger order of things and work harmoniously to keep the forces in balance. What's up guys? Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be reading from the works of Mantic Chia, who has a Taoist, Taoist, um, f f ideological, philosophical view towards, um, you know, this discipline of Brahmacharya. I'm somewhat versed with the Hindu perspective on cultivating male sexual energy, and I've talked about that um, quite a bit on my channel. But I had been curious about um, Mantic Chia and his works, and recently Improvement Pill created a video in which he mentioned Ma the works of Mantic Chia a few times. So I wanted to read the best ideas that I could come across from this book. Uh, the book is Taoist Secrets of Love, Cultivating Male Sexual Energy. It will be in the description box below. And let's get started. So here's what uh, Mantic Chia says. The universe is filled with different kinds of dynamic energy, or chi. The Tao, or way, for each man is to creatively transform his energy over a course of a lifetime back to its original state of harmonious balance. Sexual essence, or Qing, is a powerful, vital energy that is generated continuously within the human body. Sexual drive propels the course of man's evolution biologically by transmitting the genetic lineage. Emotionally, it harmonizes the love between man and woman. It, and spiritually, provides a tangible link between the ordinary creative powers of man and the eternal creative process of the cosmos. And this is something I've said um, that I felt within myself. Uh, in one of my earl earlier videos, I talked about how um, you know, retention of the vital energy is basically holding on to the infinite intelligence and the creative powers of your ancestors because it is the force that, um, you know, it is the force that is carried down from time immemorial. And this is something that uh, I I found this paragraph interesting because Mantic Chia is using a similar vocabulary. He says it's transmitting the genetic lineage, and from that comes. The ordinary creative powers of man being aligned for the first time with the eternal creative processes of the cosmos, which is kind of an amazing thing. Uh, he goes on to say, Refining one's awareness of sexual energy is one of the simplest ways to return to pure consciousness and experience the deepest rhythms of life. Conservation of sexual energy is the first principle of cultivation. Ejaculation of the male seed for purposes other than having children is a wasteful loss of an extremely precious treasure. The energy loss over long periods of time weakens the physical health of the male, can lead to unconscious emotional anger towards women, and gradually rob male higher energy and spirit of its power to rejuvenate itself. For this reason, many traditional spiritual orders in the world require male celibacy. Taoists accept sexual love as natural and healthy, but know the momentary pleasure of genital orgasm with ejaculation is superficial compared to the powerful ecstasy possible when love is enjoyed without the loss of the powerful male seed. Okay, so a uh, little bit to unpack there. One thing that I've found over the reading of this book is that the Taoist perspective of um, enjoying sexual pleasure is very different or comes across as quite different than the Hindu perspective that Swami Sivananda had preached in his book, The Practice of Brahmacharya. Basically, the Taoists believe uh, there should be a level of awakening of the sexual energy, um, but it shouldn't be so much that it should be expended. So soft intimacy or practices such as Kareza are often highly encouraged within the Taoist discipline uh, because it sort of like awakens your manly desire without expelling it, releasing it, and causing that weakness that comes about afterwards. And so this is one of the reasons why Mantic Chia actually encourages men to sort of like stimulate themselves just a little bit and then uh, to breathe in deeply and pull that energy upwards. Whereas uh, Swami Sivananda might have said that you should basically never, never even have a single sexual thought. That's one way they just differ. 
Transformation of sex energy is the second principle of cultivation. The expanding sexual energy is channeled into this microcosmic orbit, so it flows past all the major vital organs and harmonizes the etheric nature complexes in the body. These complexes are called chakras by the Hindu, Hindus. Balancing the polarity of female-male forces is the third principle of Taoist cultivation. Once the sex energy has been conserved, conserved and transformed up, a man can use meditation to balance the male and female poles which exist inside every male body. Interesting stuff. Um, I really enjoyed his perspective, though I didn't... A lot of what Mantic Chia said, I didn't really know how to process or do something with, but uh, it still has been cool to, like, know that a tradition outside of my own has similar ideas. You know, we're all grasping towards a similar truth. Okay, let's keep reading. Wise men of the Orient from have from time immemorial sought means of preventing discharge of the seminal fluid. Without exception, they have realized the tremendous implications of the sexual act. When performed with love and discipline, it may awaken dormant powers in the mind and body. The nervous and endocrine systems are particularly open to improvement. Um, and I think this ties into the fact that people on NoFab have reported higher testosterone levels, or at the very least, higher aggression. Um, I've never... Um, measured my testosterone levels but one thing that i definitely struggle now that i've been um over eight, basically eight months of cultivation is uh there's a lot more aggression that i have to work through and it takes uh, a bit more meditation for me to be, be able to process all of that otherwise i just am can be really curt with people and i have no patience with anyone's bs um extraordinary powers including healing and clairvoyant perception may evolve when one retains the semen and drives its power back up into the body. That's awesome. Chi, also known as prana, the warm current, kundalini power, or the electromagnetic life force, is very difficult to describe because this life energy is invisible and cannot be seen. However, we can feel it. One uh, great indication of, I think, having chi or prana um, I've mentioned it a few times, and it's something that I viscerally feel, I, I feel it, I'm completely used to it at this point, is uh, getting stares and getting, um, like, movement towards me from animals and bugs. Um, you know, at work, someone, someone pointed this out to me, but basically, when I'm sitting in my cubicle, when I'm sitting at my desk, at least three or four times a day, People walk up specifically to me and start conversations with me. Or if I'm walking through um, like a hall, people will often stop, stop me to have these mini conversations with me. And at one point someone pointed it out to me like, this is actually pretty bizarre. You are constantly having people just randomly walk up to you and talking to you. Um, why is that? And I didn't really, I mean, I didn't really have much to say on the matter, um, except for I feel this could be, uh, a result of cultivating chi or prana. Some Western scientists may scoff at the idea that semen is an immensely powerful substance, yet no one can, yet no one can deny the, pr the prodigious life potential in the seed of a single man. By gathering this life-generating force within oneself, one col con collects tremendous energy. The effects of conserving this energy would differ with every individual. No man or race produces the same type of energy. Each creates according to its own genius. One group develops enormous physical potential, another, another massive resistance to disease, another clairvoyant powers, still another great longevity. But all men have the inherent ability to substantially increase their active lifespan by creatively uh, adapting to their environment. Okay, this is something that Becoming Alpha talked about. Like, we are all slightly different... Um, you know, we're all slightly different in our the way our biology, physiology manifests. So, um, the practice of NoFap, it would have slightly different effects on different people. And uh, maybe that's why, for me, it comes out with a little bit more aggression. Whereas uh, someone else might go through a bit more of a flatline type scenario. But uh, I find this to be an incredibly, like, interesting notion. That he says, um, 
One person might develop enormous physical force, another great resistance to disease, another clairvoyant powers. And I, by the way, I do feel like I have a bit of this. I do have like, I can sort of read people's emotions at the very least, uh, much more than I ever could. And still another great longevity. I think that's an incredibly exciting notion. It is the very possibility of transforming our extinctual and essentially animal sexual energies into something higher that makes us human and potentially divine. The failure to di direct sexual energy upwards is a failure to fulfill our deepest human potential. Uh, I don't have much to say on that, but it's like kind of a bewildering thing. Like if you're not able to master uh, retention cultivation, that on some level you're, you're failing your deepest human potential. It is rumored that the great Muhammad Ali observed strictest sexual continence for as long as one year before his bouts. He didn't publicize this because he kept his training methods secret. And I think this is something that was like widely practiced and is continually practiced in the fight game. Uh, retention or at least continence to some degree before a fight is pretty, pretty standard practice. Um, and this is the last thing that I had noted down in my notes of reading this book. The loss caused by ejaculation is not limited to the physical sphere. Mental and emotional functions are profoundly influenced. Hormonal fitness directly affects personality and capacity for creative thought. The mind suffers from the loss of testosterone, the hormone secreted in the testes and spent in ejaculation. So um, it's something that's like widely adhered to, followed and uh, talked about by the Taoists. I think Mantic Chia, in the modern world at least, is the loudest speaker on uh, retention or having a degree of sexual retention. But uh, these ideas are very, very similar to what the Hindus have said in their talk of Pramacharya. The only thing that might be slightly different is that Mantic Chia thinks it's beneficial to have a degree of stimulation uh, so that you can sort of keep that energy alive and it doesn't become stagnant. Whereas a Hindu might say that you shouldn't even have a single sexual thought. And with my experience, I think, uh, personally, I'm leaning towards maybe a Taoist perspective is better for long-term health. Like, I think having a degree of stimulation in your life is perfectly healthy. But uh, that's my first take, uh, my first read-through on this book. Uh, I think there will be a lot more to talk about moving forward. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found this one beneficial. And let me know in the comments below if you enjoy um, me talking through the books I read. Um, if you want me to keep up with the sort of um, style of video where I just talk about the books I've read and some of the best notes that I encountered in them. And that's it for this one, guys. I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay strong. Cheers.